My man, the real estate journey continues. We got a top producer in the industry. Talk about his journey getting out of the military and how he's helping veterans get into homes, building a real estate empire, and how he's become one of the top producing agents, team leads, and entrepreneur in the industry, as well as a real estate coach. None other than Travis Winfield. Let's go, bro. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? man? Thanks for having hey. me, man. Dude, I got to call you out before we even get started. Tell me. My first impression of you, I walk in through the doors and all I hear is, your fucking lender's giving you leads? <laughs> I was like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> what's up with that? Well, dude, I just, what's, I, I, I call, I call a spade a spade, man. Like, uh, I'm a big believer that partnerships are partnerships. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've I've been through it where, you know, lending is tough, man. It's tough to get into, into the door. And I probably get at least a dozen calls a week. Every day. Asking for, to get on a coffee and all that. I just, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do my business if I took every call. Yeah, yeah. So, I just simply tell, uh, so here's what I normally tell agents and to help vet because you do want a good partner in lending. 100%. If, yeah. if your lending partner or escrow partner is not providing value back, if it's not a quid pro quo relationship, yep. then you need to reevaluate that relationship. And that was kind of the point to that. So I just simply say, when I ask, when uh, realtors come to me, I said, okay, well, look, I guard two things in my life, my time, my reputation. So for me to refer you business, I need to know that you do a good job for my clients because if my if I refer somebody and it doesn't work out, who are they blaming? Thousand percent. They're, They're blaming, blaming me. You. Yep. Right? Because I referred them. So I tell I tell uh, lenders anytime they call me, no problem. Let me see how you operate. Bring a client yep. that we can work together with, and then we can see how it works. And if everything goes great, then we can open a relationship. But. Of course, ninety five percent of the time when I do that, there yeah. I hear crickets after that. Yeah, because they don't know how to lead you. And they don't. Which yeah. I got to give props to you, brother. You literally called me up that day. That day. Yep. And it's like, hey, you got somebody who works in this area. I'm like, yeah, let's go. So you literally stood. I mean, I, you did that on the fly. So I got to give you yep. some uh, mad props on that. Dude, man. it was just coincidence. I got a I got a Facebook lead that moment, which got in the escrow for a million dollars within mm-hmm. like a couple within a couple of days. Mm-hmm. And then, but we're we're doing lead gen here with Jaden. We're just learning how to do lead gen. We're probably right. like three, four months out. But like I can see why lenders don't do it. It's a beast. It is. And yeah, you imagine that's what that's my whole job. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. you guys are, are typically the hunters. You're the front end hunters, right? We are. That's the reason why we have when I talk about business relationships, you got to make sure that you're, you know, that if you're gonna go hunt, I, well, I use the analogy of fishing, right? Okay. So us yeah. as realtors, we're the fishermen and we bring them in and then we need a whole support staff to cook them up and serve them, right? Yeah. And that's where like the lender comes in. And that's where I, I use this analogy everybody. as realtors, we're like the conductor of the orchestra. Yep. We know what everything's supposed yeah, to happen. I heard that, so I love that. And but we need to make sure you are all uh, you know in key with the instrument you're playing. So, you know, I know, I don't know all about lending, but I know what it should look like and smell right. like and taste like. So therefore I'm going to be able to keep you uh, in, on track with the transaction. Same thing with escrow, thing with title, same thing with uh, transaction coordinating, inspections. I mean, there's so much that goes into the real estate that you just got to have the right team to make it smooth for your clients. No, hundred percent. And right now with like all the chaos of, of what's going on in the industry, oh. it's, it's more than ever that you need a strong backing every which way. Absolutely. It, it's wild. Like, when, when I think about like the, the fishing, the hunting, mm-hmm. right. I was, I got a, a new agent. Uh, he, he's a relative. So we were talking and then I go, Hey man, you can either be a part of a wolf pack or you could be a lion. Mm-hmm. It's up to you, which one you want to be. We're all hunting gazelles out here. Either you're doing it as a communal and you want to be cool with everybody else, or you're out there leading the pack, trying to innovate, trying to do things for yourself. Yep. That's the way you're going to be successful. Absolutely. That's the way you're, you're going to make it. Uh, it, with with the market conditions right now, I wanted to play this video mm-hmm. yeah. with with uh, Senator Kennedy talking to Jerome Powell. I thought it was thought it was fantastic. Valuetainment. Do you watch Valuetainment with Patrick Bed David? I do not see that one, but I, I did see part of this the other uh, the other day. That's they they did a great um, take on it, and I, I thought it was interesting because yesterday they announced that they're going to increase rates and kind of get your perspective of how sure. you and your team are going to combat the higher rates absolutely and potentially a lower volume of clientele let's check it out i'm not trying to trick you you're raising interest rates you're raising interest rates to slow the economy are you not yes to cool the economy off um and one of the ways you measure your success other than fluctuation in gross domestic product is the unemployment rate is it not yes one of them yeah 100 percent okay so in effect, this, I'm not being critical. When you're slowing the economy, you're trying to put people out of work. That's your job, is it not? 
Not really. We're trying to we're trying to restore price stability. No, um, you're trying you're trying to raise <laughs> not wages. You're trying sure. to raise. But he's not backing out. Mm. No, he's he's leaning in. He's going. So that, a lot mean, of... that mean I know you don't like the phrase, so let me strike it. You're trying to raise the unemployment rate, are you not? No, we're not trying to raise it. We're trying to realign supply and demand, which could happen through a bunch of channels. Like, for example, uh, you know, just job openings. All right, job let me, openings let me could... put it another way, okay? okay. <laughs> the economists did a, did yeah, a he's going. study. He wants them to say yes. They looked at, at, at 10 disinflationary periods in America going all the way back to the 1950s. Disinflation is what you're trying to do. It's a slowing in the rate of inflation. Am I right? Yes. Probably. In other words, prices don't go down. They just don't go up as fast. Deflation is when prices actually go down. You're trying to achieve disinflation, are you not? Yes, we are. Okay. Based on history, in the 10 times that we got inflation down, disinflation since the 1950s, in order to reduce inflation by 2%, Unemployment had to go up 3.6%. Now, that's history, is it not? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but yes, the standard has been that there have been recessions and downturns when okay. the Fed has tried to reduce inflation. Now, right now, the, the current inflation rate is 6.4%, and the current unemployment rate is 3.4%. Now, if history is right, I'm not asking you to... to, to Did to he have his glasses on the whole right. time? But if history is right, unless you get some help... In order to get inflation down from 6.4% to, let's say, 4.4%, and the unemployment rate is going to have to rise to 7% based on history. That's what the record would say. Okay. And to get inflation down to 2.2%. Here we go. Based this on is history, it. an immutable fact, unemployment would have to go to 10.6%. Would it not? Yeah. Here's his response. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't that's uh, what the record shows. That's what the history shows. Yeah, I, I don't think that kind of a number is, is at all in play I mean, here. I, I know you're reluctant to admit it, and you don't want to get in the middle of a policy uh, dispute. But I think it's undeniable. It's undeniable that the only way we're going to get this sticky inflation down is to attack it on the monetary side, which you're doing, and on the fiscal side, which means Congress has got to reduce the rate of growth of spending and reduce, reduce the rate of growth of, of debt accumulation. Now, I get that you don't want to get in the middle of that fight. But the more we help on the fiscal side, the fewer people you're going to have to put out of work. 100%. Isn't that a fact? Absolutely. Please answer. Good work out there, right? Okay. Sir? It uh, could work out that way. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kennedy. Senator Reed of Rhode Island is recognized. What do you think? Uh, well, I, I I think that it's always fun to watch the this political jargon because, you know, they, they love throwing stones without a uh, solution. They all love throwing saying there's a problem without giving a solution to the problem. And, uh, you know, I'd pay attention to history, too. Uh, do you know when the last time we did have a major inflationary period in our country? Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter, 1979. Yeah. Do you know what the inflationary period was? Tell me. Uh, it was 8.1%. 8, 8. What was it in June of this year? 9.1%. That's brutal. All right. So we've seen a higher inflationary period than we did in 79. Now, here's a real good, uh, interesting, because it directly relates to your uh, what your business is. Uh, so they did the same thing. They raised rates, raised rates, raised rates to, to control inflation. So 1981, do you know what uh, mortgage rates peaked at? 18%. 19.1, actually. 19.1. 19.1% wow. was the absolute peak. That was like the highest rate recorded. That's uh, wild. And of course, there was always fluctuation, yeah, yeah, but imagine that. 19.1%? That's credit card rates. Now, I, I, keep in <laughs> mind that that was, of course, homes were only like $20,000 $20 yeah. or something like that. But still, it's it just to show you. Now, I don't think that's where we're going to head, but it's that's the only way the Fed can control this. 100%. So, yes, you know, I'm sorry, but and this is just I'm just being real. I call it what it is. I own a, I own a brewery right down here in town. Right. Yeah. What's the name? Uh, Inland War Brewing Company. Let's okay. go. I, I'm still an investor, but I don't run it anymore. But uh, 
I can actually pinpoint. And the reason why we have such high inflation is because the stimulus the government handed out over COVID. Now, granted, Absolutely. we need to support people, but I can mark the exact day that that brewery lost 20 percent of revenue was the last rev was the last stimulus check that was released. Wow. 20 percent. So what was people doing that stimulus check? Were they investing? No. Were they going out and buying, you know, stuff to, that they needed? No, they were fucking blowing off, uh, buying 100%. booze and shit. <laughs> Throwing it in Robin Hood sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> buying crypto. Right, exactly. Throwing it so, into FTX. So I'm sorry, but yes, uh, you know, there's a, my, one of my favorite sayings is, have you ever heard the cycle of history? No. All right. So it's an amazing saying. You can apply it to your, your own personal life, but you can also apply it to what we're dealing with today. And that is good times create weak people. And we've had some great times in the last few years, right? A hundred percent. All right. But guess what? We're creating a lot of weak people. Yep. And this is the reality. 100%. So weak people create bad times. So guess what? It's a cycle. We're going to have bad times. We just got to brace for it. You got to prepare for it. It's like going into winter, right? What do the squirrels got to do when they go into winter? They got to they gotta pull the acorns up. together and they got to survive. They know ready. it's coming. So we know it's coming. So the, we just got to educate people. You got to just be prepared and you're going to be okay. You're going to survive winter. But then guess what? Bad times create strong people and great people. And great people create great times. Oh, I love that. So that, that cycle, if you can pay attention to that, you'd be shocked at what it can do. And you can recognize that in your own life, right? How was your business over the last few years? Booming. Booming. Exploded. Right. Same thing with me. I was exploding yeah. over the last yep. few years. And then fourth quarter, I tell people, I tell everybody I'm talking to you right now. The last three years, you didn't even know how to fish. You could just mm -hmm. have your boat out there and the fish would just jump in your boat. 100%. You, didn't have to, you didn't even have to know yep. how to fish. You just went out there. You just went out there. Yep. Right. But it's now, too easy. but now, I mean, this is, I think you probably know this fact. Do you know that the lending industry has lost half of its loan offices in the last four months? Yeah, I'm so excited. Half. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so eager. Uh, Loan Depot Q4. Was it Q4? Q they, I think they lost 610. There's an article from Housing Wire, Jade, and if you want to look it up, it says Loan Depot lost, I think, $610 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in my industry, Compass, one of the big you know, up-and-coming tech real estate brokerages out there, had to lay off 25% of its uh, workforce during Q4 because they operate such a high overhead company yep. and they're just burning through cash like crazy. I don't know if these brick and mortar uh, companies are going to be able to survive much longer because they have so much overhead. That's the reason why I shifted to a tech company called EXP Realty, Let's go. which is a it's a cloud based brokerage that's national and they, they profited in fourth, fourth quarter. Wow. They're the only company out there that actually made profit in Q4. I think I just saw that article drop too. Yeah. I didn't read it. And, and the beauty of it is this company that I joined, they gave out $240 million in revenue share to their agents. That's wild. $240 million. How does that work? So they just, uh, are they giving stocks at a lower cost? Are they just giving you back from your overrides that well, they my, take? The EXP has three different ways to earn revenue. Number okay. one is, uh, of course, doing sales, right? But right. we all know real estate is just like loans. Every time you close a loan, every time we close a real estate deal, you're jobless. Yeah, it's over. It's, it's You got to keep that pipeline going. Well, the second way EXP does is they not profit share. They do revenue share. So for every agent that you introduce to the company, seven tiers down. So yet it's a multi-level multi marketing, yep. but it's not like Amway. These, okay. Everybody has to still sell homes, right? Yep. So it's either you, it's not like you're, I'm trying to sell you some kind of product you don't actually need. And that's what Amway is, right? Uh, this is, everybody has to buy homes. So they put it in this model. And so now seven tiers down, I get revenue share, not profit share, revenue share from every agent I introduce anywhere in the country. That's incredible. And so now I get, now I get income from that. And that's passive income now. That's mailbox money. 100%. The third way is every time I close a transaction, every time I introduce an agent, every time I cap with EXP and I do 20 more transactions, they actually match. They let me buy stock. They give me back my what I paid them in stock. Wow. And then I also get issued stock every time I introduce an agent. I get stock every time I close it. Like There's just so many different ways that you can earn stock in a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ. So is the stock that they're awarding you, is it fully vested or no, you is have to wait three for, years for okay. it to vest? And so, yeah. So, but after three years, you can cash out if you want. 
It's incredible. How many agents have you recruited to the model? Well, I just moved uh, about three months ago, but I think I already have like 12 agents that have uh, uh, joined because I'm, I'm starting my own uh, network called the more network and it stands right. for military operator real estate network. So again, I did 24 years in the Navy. So I specialize in serving veterans in my real estate business. Got it. That's so if there's a benefit serving veterans, I know about it. And so the more network is the tagline is expect more from your realtor. Right. Yep. And I'm building this nationally under powered by the EXP model. So all these agents that are going to come around the country, we're going to be specializing with serving our veterans around the country. That's incredible. We just locked up a partnership with Veteran Housing Alliance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing, and this might be something that you're interested in, is we fundraise. So we gave them $5,000 for the mm -hmm. golf tournament. Mm -hmm. And then at the golf tournament, we're going to be doing a separate fundraiser, an auction style. And we're going to present a check to a veteran along with a plaque as a pre-approval to get them into a home with all their closing costs covered by uh, myself awesome. and the housing alliance. Dude, that's, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, man. I mean, look, uh, as veterans, we never joined the military to get rich. And we are, we are unfortunately are very poorly educating our, our military on financial health. I'll even argue that our society as Americans, we have a terrible it's job terrible. of educating yep. financial health. I, I was telling this in another podcast that only of, of all the states in the country, only seven states in the United States give any kind of financial education in high school. That's wild. And in the military, you join the military, we have a tendency in the military, if somebody says, hey, I, I need to want to buy a house or I want to get a budget done or something like that. They're like, oh, they send you to Fleet and Family Service Center where they're actually the, the I mean, they're great people there, but they're getting paid basic wage to be experts in financial health. That's going to be tough. Do you want, I mean, do you no, want to learn not. from a guy getting paid minimum wage no, financial health or do you want to learn from somebody who's actually succeeded? No, <laughs> yeah, so they haven't done it. Right. They haven't done it. The and, 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 and I will tell you this. I retired six and a half years ago, and I feel like I've been learning financial health by drinking through a fire hose. There's so much we did I didn't know. I, I feel I felt stupid when I got out. Wow. And and now I'm a lot more educated. And so now I'm just every day I go door to door. If I can if I can influence one military member or veteran to get them smarter on financial health, whether that be real estate, whether that be investing, whether that be getting and maintaining good credit, whatever it takes. That's what I'm passionate about. How are you getting to the people? Like, what's your what's your strategy to get to them? Well, I do my own uh, seminar and podcast called Military Money and More, where we actually put a uh, we invite uh, members together. I'm also on the board of directors for a nonprofit called the Enlisted Leadership Foundation, where we actually okay. teach leadership to active duty military. Not most a lot of nonprofits serve veterans after they get out. Right. Very few serve veterans while they're in. Wow. And one of the things I introduced to that is while we're teaching these leadership classes. I teach a financial health class inside of that. And so I teach anywhere from like 150 to 200 students every time. Are you, so you have access to the base to be able to teach these classes? Uh, well, not to the base, but to the nonprofit. We generally do online courses that we can bring people through. And we do have a lot of great affiliations with people on base. But, you know, uh, even when I was in the Navy, we protect our, our, our gates because there's a lot of predators out there. Uh, business that like to take advantage of veterans. A hundred percent. So we everyone's just, marketing to them. They are. They Almost are. Expensive leads are VA leads. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah. So I mean, just because. So I, I have a simple thing with my business. I don't. I don't pay for leads. I don't do that. I believe in relationships, and I have built my business completely and utterly on relationships. Wow, that's incredible. So you're not going to see me on billboards. You're not going <laughs> to see me, uh, you know, standing on park benches. I just believe in pouring into my clients. Like just tomorrow night, I'm going to do a be doing a huge party. I rented out the entire rooftop of a building in San Diego, wow. where I'm going to invite all of my past clients and friends and agents, and we're just going to throw down and have a great time together. That's incredible. Yeah. I so. love that. Sa is San Diego your home base? Uh, I cover, my team covers all of Southern California pretty much. Okay. So I've got, uh, I, I like to say I cover the entire 15 corridor from San Isidro all the way up to like uh, Moreno Valley. And we're, and as we know, the more network I'm scaling that nationally. So I can actually really help anywhere, anywhere in the country. That's incredible. So you're just pushing out people, you're bringing in new, new people. Is there a way for you to help, you know, as you're doing the financial literacy class to help get them? started on their real estate courses mm -hmm. while they're active duty so that when they get out, they have a this job set. Yeah, actually, I, I actually uh, support the SkillBridge program. Have you ever heard of it? I have, yeah. We we actually got our first um, intern. So mm -hmm. Joseph Tui, I can't pronounce his last name. <laughs> um, so he, he, was, uh, he was working at FedEx and we're like, dude, you want to do something better? So uh, Anchor Up Real Estate Group, 
I'm, I'm their preferred lender. Mm -hmm. uh, so they brought him in and we started coaching him up so that he can then turn around and go become a realtor. I paid for his real estate course. Nice. I hope that's not a restful violation. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for his real estate course. Uh, Jason Bosch, both, both. But I'm sure you'll reimburse him after his first transaction, right? So you're just more of getting Whatever makes it RESPA compliant, that's yes. what we're going to do. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so. <laughs> so trying to help you out there, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Whatever <laughs> whatever it takes. Now, it was, it, it's more of a and doing the okay, right thing. And that's okay, by the way. As long as it's going to be reimbursed, it's fine. Yeah, you know, okay. and, and that's what a lot of people do is, uh, and even I would do, is that I would front somebody to get their uh, things. So yes, I actually do that. Uh, uh, I could offer skill bridge for people to learn the real estate industry. And what I'm really excited about that, I'm planning to push out is that if you're a mill spouse, think about the military spouses out there. They can't ever really have a career. Why? Because every three years they get packed up and then sent wherever Moved. the military sends, yeah. right? So they can't really step into a long-term career unless they happen to be in some kind of oh, virtual job. I love where you're going. So about. what I plan to do is I want to go to every mill spouse who's interested because every mill spouse knows everybody and they yeah. all network and, and, and support each other. I want to get them to get their real estate license so I can make them referral agents all over the country, providing direct referral leads uh, to a, our more network who everybody here can is supporting veterans. So and that way it'll keep them employed no matter where they go. That's incredible. So so talk about how, what's the process for somebody, a mill spouse to get into real estate and go through the course and go mm -hmm. through testing. So it just wherever state they and they could be anywhere, by the way. Where you could start anywhere in the country. You just need a real estate license. It doesn't matter where. You just need a real estate license and you can refer business anywhere in the country. See how that works? Right. So you just get, let's say you happen to be stationed in Ohio right now. Well, get your Ohio real estate license. Just keep that active. And if you get moved to California, Virginia, Florida, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can still refer business using that license in Ohio. So let's talk numbers because I'm a numbers mm -hmm. guy. What does that look like as far as what, what their potential earnings could look like? Well, let's just use the uh, average California here. The average commission is roughly uh, $10,000 to give it a good even number, okay. right? Well, a referral can be 25% of every one of that. So that's $2,500 $2, for every, for all you have to do is like, have you met Travis? That's incredible. And then they get $2,500. They get $2,500, 2500 bucks just by okay. saying, have you met Travis? And then we take care of everything else. That's incredible. So all I got to do is educate them on how to talk to people. That's it. So they don't need to know real estate. They just need to know that because, you know, we like referring each other. We like, you know, as military because we get taken advantage of so often. 100%. We always go and say, hey, do you know a good this, a good loan officer, a good realtor, a good handyman, a good contractor. We we rely on referrals amongst each other because we know we're going to take care of each other. And so by having mill spouses who, and again, talk is cheap, right? I, I want anybody who's going to join this program I'm going to be building to know that we, I mean, I live and breathe by my reputation. And so I want people to go cyber stalk me. I want them to know that every, any agent I'm going to refer them, that we're going to refer them to is going to put their needs first. And they're going to understand everything that is about the nuances and benefits of a veteran buying a home. Because I'm a big believer, if you've served our country, damn it, you deserve to own a piece of it. Oh, 100%. What is your process like when you're vetting people to join your team? Well, the vetting for if, if they're going to join my team, I, I am very particular. I've actually downsized my team drastically because, uh, you know, I believe in quality, not quantity. 100%. So anybody who's going to join, I make them do what's called a disc test. Okay. You ever heard of the disc test? I've heard of it. I don't know a lot about it. That's a personality type, it's, right? Where it is. Type, it, B but type. It's, well, it's, it's D, it stands for driver. I stands for influencer. S stands for supporter. And C stands for a critical thinker. So think of it like this. I'm a high D, for example. A high D, high I. Okay. So it puts it in perspective. Uh, I'm The D means like I'm a CEO brain. I make decisions quick. I don't overanalyze. I just, does it, if it feels good, just do it, right? Like Nike says. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, one of my You're mentors said, the cheese. Right. Well, one yeah. of my mentors said he's the kind of guy, and so am I, that'll jump off the skyscraper and build my plane on the way down. Oh, I'll I just figure that. this shit out, right? <laughs> one way that I'll figure it out. But I'm also an influencer. I don't mind talking to people. I don't mind yeah. getting involved. What I'm not good at is not, I'm not a critical thinker. So I'm a big believer that people are successful if they surround themselves, but people do great at what you suck at. I just happen to suck Absolutely. at a lot of shit. <laughs> so that's why I have a lot of people on my team that do great stuff like admin. I suck at it. So I need to have a good administrator, yep. uh, uh, you know, people to, you know, make things happy and supporting. That's not me, man. Like yep. I, I'm a, I'm a very direct person, yep. but I recognize that I need it. So I get people around me to put on these, you know, events for me because I don't know how to do it. I, I'm not an interior designer. So I bring an interior designer in, right? Like, but what I am good at is I'm a great negotiator. 
And I, you know, like that whole, uh, a few good men. It's like, you want me on that wall. You yeah. need me on that wall, right? I'm that guy that's going to get you the best deal possible, but you don't want me like designing your house. You don't want me running your loan because I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not a, a paperwork guy, but I always align myself with the best of the best. Who's going to take amazing care of you. I absolutely love that. Where did, where did this drive really stem from? Oh shit, man. We're going to get into a whole, <laughs> uh, reader's digest version. I've, I grew up parents divorced when I was young. Uh, I, I, from age four and I had I couldn't run, couldn't rub two pennies together growing up. Where, came, where'd you grow up? Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Uh, my mom was fantastic though. She always made sure I had a roof over my head, but we did not live extravagant at all. Right. Yeah, moms are the best. Right. But she always made sure I had food, never made me feel poor. Yeah. Although in hindsight, we were poor. Right. It's interesting right. how that happens, huh? Yeah. You don't is. know it until after. Right. Exactly. I, and, and so, uh, from age 14 in, in Virginia, that was the earliest I can get a job. I went and got a work permit and I worked 17 different jobs from age 14 to 19 when I joined the military. Holy, what was uh, one of the jobs that stood out the most? Oh gosh, you name it, man. I did. I worked at McDonald's. I worked at gas stations. I worked at old folks' homes. I delivered pizzas. I uh, worked at- uh, oh, That's uh, a lot of job changes between oh, 14 man. and- I was 19. trying to figure out my shit, man. You see, you asked my drive. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until high school that I got introduced to a- uh, uh, pilot training. I actually learned how to fly airplanes in my junior and senior year. I got, it was the first ever pilot program in high school. It's like a vocational thing. So I got incredible. to go, I got to go fly airplanes half my day in high school. That's incredible. And my instructor happened to be a Marine Corps pilot okay. from the, uh, the Korean war. And he's the first one that introduced me to the military. I had never even thought of never, none of my family had ever been in the military, but as you can see, I get bored pretty quickly. Right. right. That's why I went through 17 different jobs. So, I was going to go to college and learn how to be a pilot. But of course, I fell in that category where my parents just started making too much money where I couldn't afford financial or they couldn't qualify for financial aid, but not enough to send me. So That's I had to stage. So I had to join the military. So I did. And the rest is history. I honestly don't think where I'd be today if it was for the military, because the beauty of it with my ADD or my, you know, I see yep. squirrels every three years, I got a new job. That's a, yeah. So it was a perfect fit for a guy like me. And then that taught me discipline and taught me and it, and it, and it taught me uh, uh, morals and ethics and, you know, just a lifestyle. And so now I, I, I'm an institutionalized now, like I, that's what I spent my entire life doing. So now I'm driven. Now I'm now I get to apply all those skills I learned in the military to my business life. And so now why do why do most small businesses fail? They don't know systems and they're not they disciplined to follow through. Yep. Well, I was taught that for 24 years. I want to I want to elaborate on that because you were taught that for 24 years. What separated your military experience to where you got out and you're able to become this thriving entrepreneur versus the I don't want to say the majority because I don't want to categorize like mm -hmm. that. But you know, a lot of veterans don't have that drive. They don't have that. They get out, they get their disability mm -hmm. rating and they're stuck mm -hmm. and they're done. Or you see all the, the homeless veterans like what mm -hmm. separated your experience in the military to push you this route versus becoming a nine to five or, or staying within an institution? Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you this, it's scary as shit. Uh, I, I won't even try to front. I'm not going to say that I was some guy that like slept on the couch and like built a business while, you know, trying to suffer through. Cause you know, when you build a business, you don't get paid. Nope. People don't realize that like business entrepreneurs do not get paid until they are successful with something. So it was very scary to get out of the military. And I did, I, I actually retired a little early. I could have stayed in, longer, but I got out early to pursue real estate. And, um, so you I, were, you were doing real estate while you were in the military. Yeah, I did real estate for about three to five years prior or about five years prior to getting out. I was just doing it part time. Oh, um, but I was closing, you know, 10 to 12 deals a year, part time while I was on active duty. That's better than most full timers. I, I, yeah. And I realized that. And so I was like, well, what if I went full time? And sure enough, I went full time and all of a sudden I did 28, then 44, then 60 something, then 80 something. And, you know, in this past year, we almost did 100. So and it was all veterans and, and we're just take care of them. But I mean, I think the biggest thing for me was, is that spending that time, um, I just, when I got out, I just said, you know what, the, the, I had a safety net. I had retirement and I had disability pay. So I was getting a paycheck still. I, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I would made the plunge if I didn't have that. But it's, but I've always had that mentality over the years to have plans A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. And so I've always thought, well, let me go all in. And if I fail, then I still get my retirement check and I can live in my motor home and, yep. and, and, and have a good life. 
Uh, I have learned, I, and I've again, I've been very blessed and grown a very successful business, and I've achieved more financially than I ever dreamed of growing up. That's what this industry does, and it does. And I, but I've learned because I don't forget where I came from. I've also learned, and I had to learn the hard way. Uh, you know, I bang my head against the wall like everybody. Uh, I did learn the hard way uh, that material things don't mean shit. Yep. It's all about the experience, about giving back to others. And and so whereas some people take money and they get it twisted, I've used money the opposite. And I've just learned it's made me even more humble than I was before because I don't I'm not motivated by money. I'm motivated by helping. Um, and that's what uh, I'm excited to be able to pursue. I have a very simple motto in my business. If you chase the money, you're never going to catch it. Nope. But if you're truly righteous about taking care of others and putting their needs first above your own, the money will follow. Yeah, there's a there's an Anthony Robbins saying, if you help a million people, you'll be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, Tony Robbins, he's he was bad. I, and I will say this, like and you got to be caught and you got to be careful too. you talk about that drive. A drive can be detrimental, too. And I'm very transparent about this because I promise you I'm not the only person who's done this last year. Uh, Murphy's Law I had a great Q year, great run. And then Murphy's Law hit. Now, you know, I bought a brewery. I was building a national brokerage. I had my real estate team running a nonprofit. And then I, I, then all of a sudden, early last year, I lost my stepmother. Then I had to fire a good friend from from a from a business, and that killed me to have yeah, to do that. Horrible. And yeah. I lost that friendship, so that was like almost a death too. Then I uh, and that that killed me, and that actually started me kind of downslope. And then I lost my grandmother, and then I learned some other stuff, and then I we lost a horse. You couple that with all the weight of trying to be an entrepreneur, and I crumbled. Yep. So last year, I, I I literally did. I crumbled. I, I got into severe depression, yep. uh, and I but I hated it. Some people thrive on depression and like dread. Well, they no. like almost want to go. Oh, woe is me! Yeah, no. I freaking hated it. But I learned. I never experienced it that bad before, and I I'm, I humbled me hard. And I went and saw everything. I went to see Tony Robbins. I went to see my mentors. I got to therapy. I went to shrink. I was doing Reiki therapy. Like I was doing anything and everything I get out of it. And I finally had the ultimate decision that I needed to shed my distractions and just focus on one thing. Yep. And so I made the decision. My son is my business partner in real estate and he's fantastic. And so I said, you know what? This is the family business, not the brewery, not the national brokerage. This is our business. The Winfield Group is our business. And so I wanted to go all in with that. And since I've done that, We've been exploding again. Yeah, I and now, that. now I'm my old self again. I haven't felt this good in years. But sometimes you got to prune the tree to grow. Yep. Sometimes you got to hit that, hit the, the bottom. Yep. To, it's hit the bottom to come back up. And now, game on, man. We're we're gonna be doing some amazing things for our veterans. I absolutely love that, man. How can we help empower you to help build out your vision? Dude, same thing. It's all, I'm all about networking and, and relationships, man. So, uh, you know, for you, I love connections with other like minded realtors. Because I'm trying to build this organization of like-minded people, uh, I, you know, of course, any veterans, uh, and I, I can of course help anybody. But I love my veterans. Yeah. Uh, I've tried the luxury market. I'm sorry, bunch of pretentious assholes in the luxury yeah, market. It's tough. Uh, I've tried the commercial market. Not my thing. They only give a shit about numbers, and I like relationships, so I got out of that. So now I'm just, you know, I'm just doubling down on what I love, and that's serving my veterans. And uh, so that's so many connections that you can make through that. That's how that's how I want to serve others. Yeah, 100 percent, man. We we do a lot of we're doing a lot of lead gen. So mm -hmm. we're definitely going to be pushing people your way and your team. Yeah, for way. sure, man. Well, one, one of the big things with us is really just giving back. And I was talking to my guys recently. I'm going to go and back. I, some of your guys are military, too. That's what's yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 So he's been through three different branches. And, you know, I really try to lead from the from the front and be in the trenches with them. And right. Really. I'm, I know I'm a branch manager, but. Most of those guys are, are pencil pushing in the back, telling mm -hmm. people what to do, giving orders. And I'm yeah, the you got to lead building, by example, man. Building relationships with people like yourself, it's, it's incredible. It's, I want to go back to, to you talking about hitting that depression. And, mm -hmm. and I haven't shared this on a podcast, man. I just went through absolute hell. Same thing, going at the top of the world, getting promoted, talking to the CEOs, getting some stage presence. And uh, man, everything just took on too much. Uh, got got booked as the chief marketing officer for a crypto company. Oh shit! And uh, just started doing a lot, right? Foundation handle of four different names, like I did, huh? Everywhere. But then I started losing relationships. I started losing friendships. I started losing relationships with uh -huh. family members. I remember my niece telling me, "I think we don't want to call you anymore." Like, well, you you call us and tell us you're gonna call us back three days later. You get back to us. Uh -huh. Losing real time with my daughter, and then it was, uh, and then just looked around and I was like, "What is going on?" Like, who am I? Took a trip, separated myself, went dark for a couple of days.
came back and said, similarly said, what am I doing? The loan business is my business. Mm -hmm. This is all I'm going to focus on. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, having that hyper focus, that obsession, that Kobe Bryant mentality on one item mm -hmm. just kind of tends to get you refueled and reintegrated again. Well, I have a, I have a, I'm, I'm known for my isms, so I'm going to give you two of them that might relate here. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, if you, um, uh, Confucius once said, he who chases two rabbits catches none. So, and a mentor of mine reminded me that many times over, and it's just so true. You just got to catch one rabbit at a time. If you chase yeah. two, you're not going to catch them. The second one is, this will relate to, to you too, and it's something I live my life by. Uh, I had a great mentor named Larry Broughton. He owns a chain of luxury hotels at Prior Green Beret, an amazing entrepreneur. Um, you can actually look him up. He's on CSNBC all the time and, uh, and, and does a lot of stuff with that. But he once uh, said, he goes, uh, to be successful in this world, and success is not financial, by the way. Success is about happiness. It is spend, live your life in thirds. And what that means is spend a third of your life hanging out with the people who've already achieved what you're trying to achieve. High, and, and basically get a good mentor. Yeah. And, and somebody, and I promise you, if you ask somebody, like right now, my mentor is a guy named Brent Gove. And that's one of the main reasons why I moved this company is that now I'm with a guy who's story. already doing what I want to do in five years. Yeah, I love that guy. Right. He's yeah. amazing, right? He's on stage. He puts on the biggest real estate conferences in the in the country. Uh, the guy has 10, 20,000 people's organization, and he sees something in me and he pours into me. So I have my mentor now, and I, I could didn't have that before. So now I have my mentor, but spend a 30, then you got to spend a third of your life with your friends, family, and peers, because sometimes those goal-driven, motiv motivated entrepreneurs, we forget about them, don't we? Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what happened to you, right? So you've got to be a conscious remembering to spend a third of your life, whatever that looks like, with your friends, family, and peers, because they're going to be riding this, this journey with you. And then, Do you feel like your peers have changed over the years? Oh, absolutely. I'll touch on that in a second. Because the, the third of one is, is spend a third of your life pouring into those who are trying to achieve what you've already achieved, right? Giving back, paying it forward. And if you do that, that's going to change your life. Um, there's a um, uh, another one. Uh, and to talk on, do they change? You're damn right they do. Uh, have you by chance, and I actually, I keep <laughs> I keep all my isms on my phone. I literally have like a whole thing of isms that, I, that have oh, damn, impacted I that. me. But this one was, uh, you know, Tyler Perry? Yep. All right, yep. so Tyler Perry recently did a uh, motivational speech. It's only one minute long. So if you look them up, just go look it up. But it's talked about how some people are meant to be in your life for seasons. And it goes like this. There are people that come into your life that are only supposed to be there for a season. They are not meant to be there always. Sometimes we find ourselves hooked up with people that we thought were supposed to be there for a lifetime. But they were only supposed to be there for a season. There are people who come in your life like boosters for a rocket. If you ever watch a rocket go into space, the boosters fall off when it reaches a certain altitude. Some people are not equipped to handle the altitudes that you're going to. So don't be afraid when they fall off. It doesn't make them bad people. They're just not prepared to handle where you're going. That's Is that incredible. not true? That's not, yeah, it's incredible. Right? And, and it's, it, 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 that hit me recently. It was one of the most recent ones because I always sometimes get impacted by different people. But that hit me so hard because of everything I just went through. I had to go tell people that I thought I was going to be in business with for life that I can't do it anymore. I had to go tell that I need to go sell uh, the brewery uh, because I just couldn't do it anymore. And so those people that I was in partners with at the time, that's, I needed them. I don't regret the time that I did because I needed that. Yeah. But they were only meant to be in my life for a season. Make sense? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. You get, you get to leverage that opportunity. I love that though, that you just looked at it with passion without looking at it with regret. Yeah, you can't. You can't look at the decisions you make, you got to own. And sometimes they're going to be the wrong decision. Yeah. And I know if you're in business, you know, I, <laughs> failure is life's greatest teacher. You oh, know, uh, there's a thousand yeah. different ways to say it. You it's know, Yoda once said, you know, uh, you know, the greatest teacher failure is. And, uh, you know, Denzel Washington says, you know, fall down seven times, but get up eight. Yeah. Right. It's OK to fail. It's OK to make decisions. But uh, another quote that Larry Broughton taught me it was a, a quote by and this is where you probably know in business that a mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is they get into that analysis paralysis, right? Yep. The coaching call I was just on. Yeah. Right, I'll show you my notes. 
Uh -huh. Top line analysis paralysis. Right, exactly. And that's what the people just, and whether that be a client who is afraid to pull the trigger to buy a home, whether that be somebody who's afraid to make a decision because they want everything to be perfect before they release it. Well, Larry told me a quote by, uh, you heard of that uh, famous general called General George Patton? <laughs> Let's go. All right. He once famously said that a good plan violently executed today is better than the perfect plan executed next week. So take massive action today. today. And, and it just is true though, right? It doesn't have to be perfect because you can, you can pivot, mm -hmm. but you got to put one step in front of the other to move forward. Otherwise you're staying still. I think people get afraid that they're going to trip and fall on that step. Of course. And that's what stops. Them. And that's okay. But you just keep going. Trip and fall. Yeah. We'll keep going. Hey, right? keep going. That's a lesson learned. Cause if you, f if you trip and fall, you're still moving forward. Yeah. Cause when you get up, you're going to be a couple steps forward. But if you just stand there and don't take that step, then you're never going to go anywhere. That's fearless. You're chasing the cheese. That's it. You're chasing the cheese. Who moved it? Right. I know. <laughs> exactly. I love exactly. that. Where do, you, where do you envision yourself in five years from now? My big, hairy, audacious goal. Let's go BHAG. BHAG. Business, uh, Harvard Business Review coined that. I want to be the number one sought after veteran real estate team in the country. Okay. And I want to... Turn over my business to my son, because I think that's every dad's dream is to, yeah. and if my daughter ever decides to get into it, I'll happily share that with her. Uh, but I want to be able to build a legacy for my family. In the next five years, I want to be 55, I turn 50 this year. Okay. And so my goal is to be 55 and alive, meaning that I don't want to have to work, but I will if I need to. But I want to spend the time after that being on stage and pouring into others. So being in partnership with watching someone like Brent Gove, who gets on some of the biggest stages lights in the country and lights it up. Like yeah. he's my hero. Like he's the guy I want to be in five years. Your speaking is already brilliant. You're already a stage presence. Well, I appreciate that. But I mean, that's my passion and that's what I want to do. And it's going to happen. And I, you know, I just need to just keep on uh, manifesting it. And I think that's the key. Whatever you want to do in life, manifest. Are you envisioning it every day? Yeah, I am. Every day? I am. I am. I, and I don't turn down. Like I don't charge for speaking and stuff like that. Like, I just look to pour into it because again, if you chase the money, you're never going to catch it. But like I got hit up by uh, one of my buddies who was putting together a khaki ball down in San Diego on Saturday. I happen to be going on vacation. I'm going to be in San Diego. He's like, man, we don't, we put this together in a week. We don't have a guest speaker. I got you. Done. I got you. I, I done. Where do I got to be? And because uh, that's what I just love pouring into others. And if I can, if I can influence one person at a time, that's my why. Well, I love that. Most most people are looking intermediately at their families as their push, as their drive. Do you feel like they still influence you or is it all <laughs> externally driven? No, absolutely. Everything I do in my life is, is, is controlled by family. I've made some really, I mean, I've just like anything, I've made some very bad decisions with, I am the, unfortunately, I am a trusting person to a fault. Okay. And I've made some, I believe there's good in everybody. And sometimes I get burned. And so uh, I, because my son is my partner, I rely on his input. He's a young 23 year old, but he's done more by age 23 than I did before I was in my forties. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, shout out to you for being a good dad though. Uh, I, well, look, he, he had to take action. All I can do is just provide influence yeah. and guidance, but he's kicking ass and taking names. My, my wife has become my, uh, um, if, if I'm going to go into business with somebody, they have to meet my wife first. They have a unique intuition, huh? They do. They do. Yeah. And, and, and I don't, I don't see it sometimes, but she's, she's called out shit. And sure enough, I'm like, and I get burned. Like she just, she doesn't tell me I told you so, but she goes, mm-hmm. Yeah. They just, just a smile. And so it's okay. So it's okay. I mean, so I, I do incorporate her and then my daughter, man, she's 17 and just like trying to figure her life out. But man, that girl is going, she, she unfortunately has a lot of my traits. So she's still trying to remember I had 17 yeah. jobs trying to figure out she's going to be through 17 different jobs. She's going to go figure out her life, but whatever she lands on, she's going to be the goat, man. She's gonna be the greatest of all time because not only to, she'll have my, my tenacity, but she will also have uh, the fact she's an attractive young lady. And you know how that works, right? You get into a, a smart businesswoman, 
who can re it really is smart and they don't need their looks to to achieve but you add that to man girl that yeah, girl stop take it over it's unstoppable it's a beth from a yellowstone comes yes to yes my <laughs> wife we love yellowstone my wife actually has been trying to uh, to take learn how to drink whiskey because she loves that character oh my god yellowstone's one of the best shows made i know i how we, know how are we looking okay. there we go awesome so, brother, I, I mean, I appreciate you doing this so much. Don't forget me when you're up on stage. No, dude. Well, like I said, well, that's how we met, right? I mean, I was yeah, actually yeah. doing the opening act for uh, the Career Compass, and so uh, are you, are you coaching for them? Yeah. So I've done some like their I've done some of their classes. I generally, uh, and that's something that we're working on. That I'm also adding to that. Uh, I'm going to start to uh, um, uh, sponsoring and be a part of their. Uh, uh, classes. Okay. So I'll do a class at most of their seminars, uh, and that's going to be my start. And then we're going to see where it goes from there, man. That's incredible. I'll see you up there. Beef yeah. was asking me to do the same. And yeah. We'll see. It's, man. It's, it's, it's just aligning the right people, man. And I think, you know, beef is awesome, man. He's, he's just, uh, he's a force to be reckoned with himself and we're very much cop, cop, you know, cup in the same cloth when it comes to loving, pouring into and teaching others. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like it, man. And, and seeing the, I used to do this when I would coach kids in boxing and I would see them figure out the one, two, and then they kind of have this aha moment. And I'm employing that strategy as I'm coaching in business and I'm seeing my guys grow up and mm -hmm. having those aha moments where they're like, Oh, this works. Mm -hmm. I had, um, I had these guys go through a down payment assistance program training mm -hmm. yesterday Okay, and they get, they finished the class. And as soon as we finished the class, I walk out, I go, okay, everybody pull out your phones. And they're <laughs> like, what? Pull out your phones. Okay, let's go. We're going to go on IG. We're going to hit a story right now. And they're looking at me and they're nervous. And I'm like, post on the story. Hey, just got a $100,000 grant in San Bernardino. Who wants it? And so both my guys uh, post on their story. And then I walk away. And then they both text me separately. Oh, shit. We just got a lead off of this. It works. And I'm Shocking. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's true, too, man. I mean, and, you know, we probably have a unique skill, right? Like I said, I suck at a lot of stuff. I jokingly tell people God had a lot of gifts in this world. Some people can fix things, make things, sing things, plays yeah. things. I can't do any of that shit. You got the gift of gab. Bro. All I have is a big hole in the middle of my yeah, face. Yeah. That's all I got. That's all you need. But it's unique, though, because yeah. I've learned. I mean, do you know that public speaking is 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 if you look at all the fears in the world, do you know, public speaking is the number one fear of no people. Doubt. Number one fear. Like people would rather die than go on, than stage. Go on stage and do public yeah, no speaking. Doubt. <laughs> no doubt. That when we try to get people to go on camera. Right. Remember at the Compass event, I told everybody, pull out your phones. I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Pull out your phones and everybody just freaks out. And that's behind a lens. I know. I know. Let alone in front of 300 but, people. But here's the thing though. And here's my two cents on that marketing piece. Video is necessity, but some people try to get this overproduced crap that nobody watches that. But if all you got to do is just throw your phone up in front of you and just be authentic, because no, here's the key. Not. You can't fake authenticity. If you're scripted or you seems like you're scripted or if you seem like you're blowing smoke up your up people's ass, they're going to know it. So just be authentic. If yeah, you do that, on. people are going to people are going to follow you for days. And that's the key. Right. So I just be it. authentic. So is your, is your podcast live and going? Not yet. We're in the production phase right now. Um, so we're building out content and we're hoping to launch it in the next uh, six months. But though I, I did it the, I did it before. I used to do a podcast with my son. We used to just do it every week. It was really hard to maintain when you're just kind of doing it as you go. So this time we're trying to produce like 10 episodes so then we can release it and then just start being able to keep up that way. I just, you just got to stay consistent with it. Oh, that's so hard though, especially when you're, <laughs> this is my, my downfall, man, is consistency with regards to like me, I see squirrels. So right. like I need people to, I need, I need to hire managers to manage me. A hundred percent. Yeah. I got my assistant without her. I die. Yeah. Without, I have no idea. Yeah. And there's times she'll, she'll come to my office and she'll stand over me and goes, here's your list. I'm not leaving till this is done. That's okay. Okay. All right. That's here it. we go. That's what you got to do, man. That's what you got to do. Consistency key in all of it, right? I mean, that's the key. And if that means you got to hire somebody to keep you consistent, so be it. Yeah. As long as you recognize your shortfalls. And that's where I think most people make a mistake is they don't recognize their own shortfalls and they always want to blame others. I've always said anything that happens to you, look in the mirror first. I'll give you an example. I had a house that I bought uh, up here in Murrieta. Million dollar house, had it, tried to buy, start a horse business, never start a horse business, terrible business. Uh, and so I only was there for two years. I'm like, I, I need to get out of here. And I was looking for yeah. any reason to get out. And I ignored all the uh, red flags and I put a tenant in there that 
against my, my wife's judgment, I said, no, I can see this is going to work out. It's going to work. This is when I ignored my wife and I'll never ignore her again. And uh, put her in there, uh, paid me one month's rent. That was the last thing. I ended up having to go through the whole eviction process. By the time I got back to the, the home back, she had done over $200,000 worth of damage to the property. And a lot of people would say, man, the hell with her. That's, you know, she's terrible. She's a terrible person. I kept hearing that. I was like, but I put her in my life. Yeah. So I always look at myself first before I ever throw stones at anybody else. I always look at myself first. And if you do that, if you instead you look at yourself, ownership. you own it, then it's going to be a lot easier to get through it. Jocko Wilkins, extreme ownership. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of people cut like you, bro. I appreciate That's incredible. that. Man. I appreciate you doing this, man. Thank Anytime, you, man. Thank you for giving us your time, your energy. Of course. This was a lot. I felt like I was just watching you on stage. <laughs> oh, I appreciate <laughs> Before that, Before we go, when you're on stage, do you picture people in their underwear? Nope. Don't need to. <laughs> you it just love grosses it. me out a little bit. You just love it? Yeah, I just love it, man. I love engaging and I, I much prefer actually seeing people in front of me because I can, I, I get, I, I feed off the energy. Yeah, you're throwing it down. Yeah, I can feed the energy and the more energy I feel, the more I can pour into them. I feel like you got so much to give, brother, that it's just innate. Well, I, all I need is a big microphone, man. That's why I'll, I'll never turn down a microphone because if I, like I said, all I do is, do is impact one person. That's all that matters to me. Well, hey, you impacted me today, man. I appreciate your time. Brother, Thanks, I brother. appreciate you, man. Absolutely, man.